This week on Cars with Big Boy Travel, we take you through the process of filing a car insurance claim. We review the all-new BMW X2, the sports activity coupe that's built for the millennial age. All this and much, much more only on Cars with Big Boy Travel. So ladies and gentlemen, today on Cars with Big Boy Trev, we are reviewing the BMW X2 in our long going series of testing crossovers and this one being premium, we are trying to see what are the subtle differences between the brands. Recently we did the Mazda CX-30, we are very impressed with the quality and of course we've done the Mercedes GLA but today we are going all the way to Munich in Germany for the Bavaria X2. Where do we start? the dashboard Kamakawaida and as you can see the dashboard has a two-tone design so obviously at the top you do have soft touch uh, plastic and of course this uh, silver trim which is plastic with the piano black finish and of course the lower part actually corresponds with the sitting color this is called ivory leather and you can see the stitching that looks very very good the design forward base to give you more room to create an illusion of space in the vehicle which is very very important um in crossover world you know space is the name of the game practicality is everything so this is what these guys are trying to do to ensure that this particular car feels airy and roomy so let's look at the center console as you can see it's typical bmw bmw have never shied away from this design it's been there it's a classic design and of course this car being targeted at an audience that is very modern and young they do have an amazing screen that, that's here. It's a multi-touch screen that actually houses all the uh, different features from climate control, radio, and of course navigation in some certain models. And this Mr. Miracle will give you a lowdown about it. And obviously, right below it, you have the vents which are actually carved as you can see. And of course, the radio system, BMW business radio, um, BMW normally make good, amazing radios. So the high spec of this car, you probably get a Harman Kardon, which is fantastic sound, crystal clear clarity, which is very, very important. At below, you have a dual zone climate control system that allows you to modulate the temperature within the cabin without any stress. So the driver and the passenger can have different settings and everybody can enjoy. And of course, you do have vents at the back here just to ensure that you have cool air that is circulating within the cabin. Moving over to the uh, this particular interesting design of the gearbox console, as you can see, there is some design aspect that BMW are trying to bring here. They're trying to fit in into a space. This particular version actually has a manual gearbox. So if you are afraid to drive a manual, don't worry, there's an automatic version on the higher spec version, but this is just enough. I love manuals because you're able to engage with the car and have a good time while you're driving. Cabby holds and spaces in plenty. Being a soft there is so much, so you can actually have two cup holders over here and you can actually have space for your uh, key, which is actually, uh, kill it and then a spot where you can actually have a cigarette lighter to light up your cigarettes if you're a smoker obviously just around the gearbox console you do have uh, the iDrive system which is standard you know BMW have been having the iDrive for close to 20 years now and they've refined the product in such a way that it is very intuitive and even the menu as you toggle in able to select media menu connect to Bluetooth do so many things with this particular menu very easy to control obviously you do have on the right side of the gearbox you do have stability control and of course the different settings for the engine so eco pro and sport and of course dynamic if you need the power of the BMW moving over to the instrument pinnacle clear and precise typical BMW italics it's black on white so there's good contrast so on the left hand side you do have the speedometer on the right hand side you do have the tachometer and in between you do have some certain um, uh, temperature and of course it will tell you the fuel consumption of this particular car at an instant and you look at it it will tell you if you're doing uh, you're driving economy or you're driving sporty so it'll be able to tell you how much fuel you're using at any given time and obviously you do have heads up display standard on the higher model but this one doesn't have a heads up display and of course you do have the steering wheel which is actually very good it's stitched and of course a three spoke but something funny for this model this particular one doesn't have satellite buttons i wonder why i don't think it's that expensive to put satellite buttons because everybody in the game actually has satellite buttons the mazda cx30 and of course the hyundai Creta and many others do have that sort of thing so i don't think it's something that you can delete it uh, for the price and the cost of this particular car obviously as you can see here you do have a good finish over here you do have the uh, light clusters you can control the head beams and of course the fog light and so many things um it actually has uh, automatic uh, beam adjustment so that when you're driving at any given time you're able to adjust and focus the light very easily without any 
stress. Seats are very comfortable, big boy is very comfortable as you can see. Um, this particular model has um, height and reach adjustable seats. You can adjust to your preference and of course even the steering wheel you can actually do uh, tilt and telescopic based on your seating preference. You're able to have a good journey while driving this particular car. As you can see the seats are very comfortable. Leather is amazing, a very leather and it's very comfortable. But you need to find out what this system is all about. So I'm going to hand over to Mr. Murigi who's our resident tech experts will give you a lowdown on this iDrive system so we'll go to the back and see the practicality of the rear seat and of course the boot and then we get to drive the BMW X2 courtesy of Kazu Big Boy Trev. When it comes to technology the BMW X2 is at the top with everybody in this game. I have to start of course now with the key it's the new design from BMW looks very nice and to look very nice on your table because that's what happens with people with BMWs and Mercedes. Using that key, you're able to do keyless entry and keyless start. So when you walk close to the car, the doors will unlock and you just walk into the car and have a fantastic experience. You, of course, now have keyless start. So there's a start button over here. Right next to it is the button for activating or deactivating the start-stop system. So because this car is built for the urban environment, if you're going to be stuck in traffic, the name of the game with this car is efficiency. So that system will actually shut off the car when the car stops in traffic which is something that is going to happen quite a lot in this Nairobi of ours. The infotainment system here, of course, now is BMW's iDrive system, and it includes efficient dynamics, which is now a system that basically allows you to look at what the car is doing and be very efficient in your driving. So it actually helps you with shift points because this is a manual car telling you when to shift the gears, and it also will give you a readout of how you're doing in terms of fuel efficiency and lowering your fuel consumption. This iDrive system, of course, is also connected to your media system. So you can actually plug in USBs over here in the front. There's a 12 volt socket for charging and there's a USB over here that you can plug in your phone and connect to Bluetooth over here for music and making calls. The iDrive system also gives you insight into what is happening with the car. So it will give you service reminders telling you what's going on. And this car specifically is fitted with tire pressure monitoring. So it will actually let you know when you need to check things like your tires or things like your service parts. But let's go on to the back of this car and see how much space it has for passengers and for the stuff that you want to carry. Coming around to the back of the BMW X2 and the name of the game here has to be space because this, they're calling it a compact SUV and it has to back that up with the amount of space it has for passengers and for goods. This seat is set to Trevor's driving position. He's six foot one. I am five foot nine and I have just enough space for my knees and a lot of space for my feet under here. It's actually a comfortable place for two adults sitting across here. In terms of space for stuff, you have two storage nets, one at the back of each of the seats and then storage areas in the middle over here. The door beams are actually very large. What I would say is actually the largest for the class. You can fit a one liter bottle in the side over here. In the middle, we have cup holders. Anybody that BMW is familiar with this, very interesting can hold either a big or a small container in terms of safety we have side curtain airbags coming all the way to the back and we have isofix points for child seats that are available but let's check out the back to see how much it has in terms of capacity for the stuff that you want to carry around coming around to the boot of the bmw x2 and i love this you actually press the bmw logo to open the boot and it reveals a big wide usable space I love this because it has 470 liters, which is very, very good for this class. The fact that it does not have a spare tire means that there's additional space inside here with quite a lot of space. You can actually put, I think, even a suitcase. You can also fold the seats down flat and it's very flat and very open if you need to carry a lot more stuff. In terms of technology, we have a 12 volt socket over here and some storage nets on the side in case you have smaller things that you want to carry and you don't want them moving around. But it is time for us to take this car on the road and let Trevor let you know how this feels as an ultimate driving machine. Subarus are very powerful cars and they need good sparking power to give you that power that we all love. 
Yes. Uh, what's the difference between a genuine Iridium spark plug vis-a-vis -vis an aftermarket plug? Okay, for, for example, this is an Iridium plug. Uh -huh. These plugs are, are manufactured specifically for a certain model. For example, if you're buying parts, uh, if you're buying spark plugs for your Forester yes. SJG, uh -huh. that's a turbocharged FA20 engine, uh -huh. uh, DIT. Uh, the DIT will require some specifications like uh, a 0.6 millimeter gap mm -hmm. and a heat range of around eight mm -hmm. for optimum performance. Mm -hmm. Those specifications you can get on a non-genuine plug. So the only way to get it correct is to buy a genuine plug. Wow. And what's yes. the longevity of this plug? How long will it last? These plugs can take you up to 50,000 kilometers. 50,000? Yes. That's five years considering most Kenyans drive on an average of 10,000 kilometers. Mm -hmm. Five years of not changing your plug. Yes. So it is worth that if you use a non-genuine plug, what happens? Now, uh, if you use a non-genuine plug, after 10,000 kilometers, it will not be able to generate the right sparks to ignite the mm -hmm. fuel. Mm -hmm. So that means uh, your fuel consumption will go up, and you will need to change five times before you, you change the genuine one. Guys, I have nothing to add. Listen, if you are driving a high-performance Subaru, any other Subaru, and you have longevity, you want fuel efficiency and everything, please get the genuine one. Now, moving on to the most important thing as well, oil filter. This one, Perfect. same yeah. case with the air filter? Yes, yes. First of all, it has the, the component that is used to manufacture this. Mm -hmm. It's able to filter off those finer particles, metal particles, eh, and mm -hmm. ensure that clean oil goes to the engine. One more thing is the relief valve. Mm -hmm. It's set correctly, accurately, so that it opens up at around 160 kPa. Mm -hmm. When the oil filter clogs, the relief valve opens, eh, allowing the oil to bypass the filter mm -hmm. and lubricate the engine, engine, engine parts. Uh -huh. For an engine oil filter, it might not open up. Uh, the reliever means. might not uh -huh. open up when the, the oil filter clogs. That means your engine will run without adequate lubrication. That means your lifespan will reduce wow. immensely. Guys, you uh, don't want that. You want to make sure that your car is actually well lubricated. And actually, the oil filter is quite important. For those who don't know, oil filter allows this car to maintain good viscosity with the engine and of course reduce the number of particles but also with all this performance and everything you need to stop stopping power now i have a set of very heavy brake pads why is it important for you to buy a genuine part for your subaru a genuine brake pad okay for example you see this brake pad eh? mm -hmm. is bent for an outback 3.6 a mm -hmm. brf uh -huh. the density of the material that is used to manufacture this is high mm -hmm. and is able to resist heat mm -hmm. and ensure uh, that uh, breakfast is a, we avoid breakfast mm -hmm. because of the heat that is generated. Now joining brake pads will heat up mm -hmm. and uh, the low breaking distance will increase. Wow, That's putting you and your family at risk. At risk. Wow, it's Guys, important to put genuine brake pads. Yes. So guys, we are now sampling the BMW X2. As you all know, this crossover segment is growing at an exponential rate. And right now, most manufacturers are trying to fill in the gaps that are in the current model ranges. Like this particular one is the BMW X2. It fits right in between the X2, X1, and the X3. So basically, it's a crossover that is based on the Mini platform. As you know, the Mini is part of the BMW group. So front wheel drive, still has the BMW turbo power up front. Speaking of engine, this particular one that I'm driving is a 1.5 liter turbo petrol unit that produces 140 horsepower and 220 newton meters of torque. That is enough if you floor it, gives you good boost and of course good fuel efficiency. Well, BMW claims that this particular car will give you 5.6 liters per 100 kilometers if you drive this car on a combined cycle, and I say combined highway and city traffic, that is not bad for this 1.5 liter engine. Suspension up front, you do have McPherson struts at the back. You do have much link coil rear suspension that helps this car to become very, very planted. But in terms of safety, as you drive this car, you feel the power of the M turbo unit. What does it have? Well, up front, of course, you do have 
dynamic stability control or in normal terms ESP. It, you know, it's an amalgamation of terms put together, ABS, brake assist, traction control to help you mitigate and avoid an accident. But in case all hell breaks loose, then you can rely on the six airbags, the camera standard, and of course a five-star safety rating passenger cell that will protect you and your family from harm's way, which is very, very important. And as I can tell you for a fact, the crossovers are now becoming very, very sporty. This one is peppy and it pulls effortlessly. Since this particular car actually has a, one of the best engines in town, can it do some off-roading like the Mazda 6 that we tested earlier or the Mercedes GLA? When I hand over the race to Mr. Amirik, who's our resident 4x4 expert, he's going to give us a lowdown on how capable this car is. Look at the ground clearance. How does it fill with the rough road package? And of course, at the end, give you value for money. Do you think this BMW X is better than a Mercedes GLA? Let's find out. They are calling this a compact crossover, which means that it should be able to handle itself off the road. Now, the BMW X2 has 182 millimeters of ground clearance. This is the 18i, which means it's a 1.5 liter three cylinder engine with a turbo. And this is the manual, the six speed, which means I am actually able to control exactly what I want this car to do. Now, this ground clearance is actually doing a really good job over here on this test track that we have so i'm able to actually go over this rough road which simulates the kind of road that somebody who has this car would be on basically if you're going shags and you are you wanted to turn off the tarmac and you're getting right into your shosho's house there's that last stretch of the road that's kidogo rough and this car can actually handle that really well so this engine is actually very nice it's just as nice off the road as it is on the road because like i mentioned with the clutch and the gears here, I am actually able to figure out what I want to do and set it up so that it does that very well. It's giving me all the power everywhere I need it. And the ground clearance is keeping it off the road, off, the, off any of the imperfections without a problem. The other thing that it's doing very well is that it actually has a gear shift indicator in the middle over here. So when I need to change the gear, it will actually indicate over here that I need to change the gear and help me with that, whether I'm on or off the road. Now over here, we have a bit of a dusty section. And this is where this car's ability is going to be tested a bit. So it's a flat surface, but it's very loose. And it simulates the kind of road that is being built as you're on the way to Shango. So maybe the, somebody has started building the road. It's in that first stage. And this is doing pretty well. Like I mentioned a lot with these compact SUVs, the fact that it's been raised means it has additional suspension travel, which means that this is actually pretty smooth off the rough stuff. But it's time for us to measure this car against the competition. Let's go to Valley for Money. You are the beautiful Garden City residences, and I can tell you, it's in the BMW X2's natural habitat. Young, upwardly mobile vehicle for the family, for the modern family. But Mr. Murigi, what are your thoughts on the BMW X2 considering we've done quite a number of cars in this segment? Well, it's been a long time since I've driven a BMW that's a manual and this car reminded me why these things yes. are called the ultimate driving machine. But this segment as a whole is getting very, very competitive. We've seen there are quite a number of entries in this, in this market globally and within Kenya itself because in this show ourselves, we've had the opportunity to sample the Mercedes-Benz GLA and the Mazda CX-30. And I can tell you this segment is growing at an exponential rate, but most importantly, how much is this car? Well, the price of this specific unit that we have over here, which is the X2 18i S-Drive, is 6 million shillings. But this comes with BMW Kenya's amazing five-year 200,000 kilometer warranty. And I can tell you for a fact that 200,000 kilometers you can actually drive on and on and on, considering that most of these people are in the urban jungle, like over here. But Mr. Murigi, as compared to the rivals, what are your thoughts on this? What are the key rivals on this particular segment? Well, the key rivals for this car in the Kenyan market are the Mercedes Benz GLA and the Mazda CX 30. So, guys, do you think this particular car is much better than the rivals? Send us your thoughts are seen on the social media handles below, and we'll get back to you with the results next week we're signing out this is big boy trev this is murigi drive safe and be safe